Hey guys, David here, and in this video, I'd like to answer some of your most popular questions about walking the Camino de Santiago, including some tips and advice. So I hope you find this video useful. Okay, so what is the Camino de Santiago? The Camino de Santiago is a network of pilgrim routes around Europe that end up in Santiago, Spain. It's a walk that's been around since the Middle Ages, so hundreds of years. And while many people did it for religious reasons back then, today, many people do it for religious reasons, spirituality, adventure. Everyone seems to be on some type of quest for something. Now, there's many different routes that end up in Santiago, Spain, with the most famous and popular route being the Camino Frances, which is the one that I walked back in September of 2019. So why do people walk the Camino de Santiago? Well, again, everyone has a different reason for walking the Camino de Santiago, from spirituality to religion to adventure. Now, for myself, I decided to walk the Camino because I was undergoing a big change in my life. A few years ago, I had moved from California to Europe and I needed the time to think, to reflect on the next steps of my life. And again, many people walk it for different reasons. I have an, an American friend who decided to walk the Camino because he just quit his job and he also needed the time to think about the next steps in his life and his career. There's another friend who lives in Sweden who was burnt out from work and a result of that burnout, she couldn't walk. And she told herself that when she was able to walk again, she would walk 800 kilometers across Spain. And there were friends from Germany who had just finished university and they had no idea what they wanted to do next in their lives. And so they decided to walk to figure out these next steps. So again, everyone has a different reason to walk the Camino, whether it's religion, spirituality, and or adventure. But it seems that everyone has this big question to answer and they decide to walk to hopefully find some answers or some clues to these big questions. So what types of people walk the Camino and should I do this alone or with a group? So, You'll meet everyone from around the world and that's the most beautiful part about the Camino is that it's one single path that brings people together from around the world, from Europe to the Americas to Asia to every single country you can think of. You'll find them on the Camino de Santiago. And I would say that most people that I've met, including myself, did it alone or with friends, family members. People did it independently and I think that's the way to go because one of the most amazing parts about the Camino is just meeting people along the path and just when you decided, I'm gonna stay in this town tonight, then you meet some amazing friends and you decide your plans change and you decide to stay in some other town because you wanna stay with these friends. And that's really the most amazing part about the Camino. It's the people, it's the spontaneity. And so that's why I would advise you, if you can, to do it independently, whether it's by yourself or with a friend or a family member. When should you walk the Camino de Santiago? Well, I think you should walk the Camino whenever you get the chance. But generally, most people walk it between March and October with June and July being the busiest months in the summer. I can only speak about my experience walking in September, but I liked it. I loved it because of two things. One, it's less crowded than June and July. And two, it's less hot than June and July as well. For me, I really dislike walking in really hot weather. And that's why I decided to go in September of 2019. Yes, the days were cooler, but generally I enjoy walking in cooler weather and there were a few days of rain, but actually those few days of rain were some of the most memorable. I remember there was a day that I was walking with my friends Daniela and Kirk and all of a sudden it started pouring. It started pouring wind and rain and we had to hurry ourselves into the next town. We weren't speaking, we were just walking. And at that time, it was quite painful. But when I look back, 
that was one of the most memorable experiences on the Camino. So is there a best time to walk the Camino? It depends on your preferences, but most importantly, I think that whenever you get the chance to go, just go because the Camino is not so much about the weather, but it's really about the people that you meet along the way. And the people is something that you cannot predict. What should I pack? What should I bring? Well, the biggest advice I would give you when it comes to packing is to go light, to go simple. Because think about it, this is not a walk in the woods. You're going through cities, towns, and villages. So you'll have the opportunity to buy new things, to restock every single day. Now, everyone's preferences for packing are going to be different. This is mine. My backpack weighed around 7.5 kilograms at the beginning, or around 16.5 pounds. I had a 40 liter backpack from REI. I had convertible pants, which were extremely useful because in the morning, I would start off with convertible pants. And when the sun came out, I would unzip those pants to become shorts. I also had a pair of pants for the evenings, a down jacket, two pairs of long sleeves, two pairs of underwear, two pairs of t-shirts, running shorts, trail runners from Solomon, and I would advise you not to bring boots because this walk is not a technical walk. Many times you'll be walking alongside the highway, so many people who started out with boots ended up with trail runners because they had blisters. So I would advise you to go with trail runners, two pairs of socks, sandals, a sun hat, travel towel, my buff, which is probably one of the most valuable investments for the Camino and for life, my passport, earplugs for snorers because there will be snorers in the albergues, a sleeping bag liner, sunscreen, bug spray, a camera. I also brought a headlamp for days where we started earlier in the morning, sunglasses, a plastic water bottle from the supermarket, toiletries, and that was it, 7.5 kilograms, 16.5 pounds, including my camera. How much does it cost to walk the Camino Frances? Well, I did another video explaining how much I spent, including a detailed breakdown on my budget, which I'll link in the description below, but in total, I spent around 916 euros or about 28 euros per day across 33 days on the Camino Frances. And this came out to around three euros for breakfast, four euros for lunch, eight euros for dinner, 10 euros for a bed, mostly albergues. Coffee costs one to two euros. A wine and a beer also costs around one to two euros as well. How does money work and how much cash should I bring? Well, cash is still king on the Camino and it's important for you to carry cash at all times on the Camino. Yes, you can use your credit card in some of the bigger towns and cities, but for most towns and albergues, they won't accept credit card, so you need cash. So I brought around 300 euros at the very beginning of the Camino and every five, six or seven days, you'll be able to find an ATM somewhere in a town or a city where you'll be able to restock. What about food? So there really is not a whole lot of variety of food options on the Camino unless you get to a big town or a big city. Now for breakfast, I usually had a cafe con leche, coffee with a potato omelet. And for lunch, I usually chose a bocadillo or a sandwich and when dinner came, I selected the pilgrim's menu. A pilgrim's menu is a set menu for pilgrims that includes a starter like salad, sometimes paella. It includes a main dish like lamb, beef, or fish. And there's dessert as well, pudding, ice cream. And of course, there's always unlimited wine, water, and bread as well. And depending on where you stay, 
there's sometimes communal kitchens where you cook with people, you prepare the food with people, and you wash the dishes and everything with people as well. So those are generally pretty fun and those are generally cheaper and donation based as well. And of course, there's always cafes and restaurants in town that can be cheaper or more expensive depending on what you order. You could also stay with friends and other pilgrims together in Airbnbs where you cook together as well. What about sleeping? Accommodation? Well, I would say there are three main types of accommodations on the Camino. The first one being albergues. These are big dorm rooms, big hostels. Think of 10 beds, 10 bunk beds, and think of 300 plus bunk beds as well. These are the most popular types of accommodations on the Camino. And I would say if you want the Camino experience, go for albergues, but make sure to bring earplugs as well. And generally per night, these are the cheapest options. They range from five to 15 euros per night. Now, if you want a little bit more privacy, you can still have that Camino experience by staying in pensions. These can still be bunk beds, hostels, but generally smaller, but you can also have private rooms as well. These range from anywhere between 10 to 15 euros per night. And of course, if you really want privacy, you can always go for hotels and Airbnbs as well. What does a typical day on the Camino look like? Well, to be honest, a typical day is quite simple, but quite rich as well. Let me explain. A typical day starts off around 6 a.m. You wake up, you have breakfast, you walk for a few hours, you might talk, then you might stop for a coffee, and then you might walk for a few more hours for lunchtime. And then for lunch, you might have a sandwich, you might have a conversation or two, then you walk and talk for another few hours until you get to your final destination. And then dinner time, bedtime around nine, 10 p.m. Then you wake up and you repeat. You repeat this for 30 days. That's quite simple, but every day is quite rich because while you do the same things every day, you walk, talk, eat, and sleep, it's really the people that you meet along the way that make up these rich experiences, these stories that really enrich your experience. So that's why I would say a typical day, it's quite simple, it's quite predictable. You wake up around the same time, you go to bed around the same time, but it's really the people, the different types of people and the stories that you encounter that make it truly unique and rich. How should you prepare for the Camino? Well, I would say there are three levels of preparation for the Camino. The first one being physically, second, mentally, and third, logistically. Now, physically, everyone is different based on age, fitness levels, health levels, and the most important thing is to stay in shape, whether this is running, walking, hiking, cycling, staying in shape, being active, staying active. And number two is mental preparation. And I would say this one is more important than anything because the people that walk the Camino and finish the Camino come from all walks of life. 10 year olds, 84 year olds, people in wheelchairs, they have all finished the Camino. The Camino is not a race, it's a marathon. It's a game of endurance. It's a mental game of endurance. And the thing about the Camino is you're never alone. You're always there with people and you're there to help people. People are there to help you. So if you think you can do it, you can do it and you will do it. Now, logistically, this is all about preparing your tickets, your packing list, etc. And there's more than enough information online nowadays to help you out. Whether there are blogs on YouTube or on the internet, there are communal groups you can join on Facebook. There's a Camino de Santiago forum, which I'll link in the description below. What are my final tips and advice? One thing I wish I would have known is to bring a rock or bring a stone to leave on top of the cruise de Ferro. You see, you get to a point, the highest point of the Camino called the cruise de Ferro, and many people bring along with them a stone and they leave that stone behind on the cruise de Ferro, which represents them 
leaving behind a burden in their lives. I didn't bring a stone. I didn't know to bring a stone. But luckily, my friend Sarah gave me an extra stone. And I was able to leave that stone behind on the cruise of Pharaoh, which ended up being a very emotional moment for myself. I would also say to not judge people because there will always be a group of people who decide to judge others based on what they do and how they decide to walk the Camino. For example, there's always people who decide to take the bus from one town to the next. This could be due to injuries or because they simply want to. And there's always a select few that will judge. That's not how you're supposed to walk the Camino. But who's to say there's a right way to walk it? And who's to say that your way is the right way? Then there's people who decide to make reservations in advance for hotels, albergues, they pre-book everything. And there's always a select few who decide to judge them. You're not supposed to pre-book everything. That's not how the Camino works. Again, who's to say there's a right way? And so I would say that you should not judge people based on what they decide to do and how they decide to walk it because each person's communal experience is unique to himself or herself. And lastly, while it is cliche, I do want to say, enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey because it will end before you know it. I remember at the beginning I was rushing. I was rushing, trying to get from one town to the next town for a bed. And because I rushed, I missed out on so many potential conversations, friendships with people. It was only later that I realized that the Camino, it's not so much about a bed, but it's really about these friendships, these conversations. And I remember when we finally arrived to Santiago, when we finally arrived to Santiago, it was very anticlimactic. Is this it? Is this it? And it got me thinking that Santiago was not really the Camino. The Camino was really about the way, the friendships, the conversations, the dinners, the walks, the challenges, everything along the way. That was the Camino not so much the endpoint of Santiago. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I hope you continue walking, talking, and buen camino.